All right, November 17th, I believe. Let me see. Yep. Uh, Saturday, November 17th, and I'm going to give a quick World War III update again, uh, just monitoring the situation going on in Gaza, and uh, this headline jumped out, just to confirm that this really looks like the escalation uh, I was talking about a while back. Uh, this is this is important, I think. Uh, the Arab League meets, this is the important part, of course, Israel is pounding Gaza, Gaza, uh, the Hamas is firing on Israel, and, and you know, they're preparing, Israel's preparing a ground invasion, a ground incursion into Gaza Strip. Um, but this is, this is the part that I want to focus on because this is where we're at uh, in history and where I think we are in the final three and a half years. Uh, on Saturday night, the Cairo-based Arab League held an emergency meeting of Arab foreign ministers to discuss an Arab response to the situation. Many of the participants called for Arab assistance to the Palestinians and a Reconsideration, that's a euphemism, I think that's why they put it in quotes, <laughs> a reconsideration of Egypt's peace treaty with Israel, which going back to August 8th has been effectively uh, ignored by Egypt and moving troops into Sinai and bombing in the Sinai Peninsula and being near the border with Egypt. And in fact, this recent conflict uh, with, is, with uh, between Israel and Gaza uh, uh, is I've, I've uh, heard a man being interviewed about this, uh, probably caused by four soldiers being killed by Egyptian troops. So this is uh, this conflict was instigated by the Egyptians. Uh, at least that's one claim out there. And he, uh, I, I don't know. He was on the faculty at some university. I wish I may have to dig that up. Maybe I'll, if I find it uh, again, I'll put it in a uh, at the link to the video down below. It was, uh, you know, mainstream media reporting it. But either way, um, so let's consider a reconsideration of this peace treaty with Israel. Uh, the league's chief, Nabil al I don't know, urged Arab states to adopt a strict stance on the conflict, although it was unclear whether the usually toothless body would be able to agree on decisive action by the end of the meeting. But they say this, we can no longer accept empty meetings and meaningless resolutions uh, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi, this is going to be important, right, also hosted meetings Saturday with two regional heads of state to discuss the makings of what he and other regional leaders have promised would be a more robust response to Israel's actions than in past conflicts. He and Turkish Prime Minister uh, Ray, I don't know, Ray Tayyip, you know, that guy, there he is, see the name? Okay, discussed joint efforts to stop Israel's attack on Gaza. Morsi spokesman, Morsi's spokesman, Yasser Ali, said in a statement published by the news agency MENA. Morsi also uh, met with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamed, Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, uh, to coordinate the delivery of emergency aid to Gaza, MENA reported. Uh, speaking at Cairo University on Saturday afternoon, uh, Erdo Erdogan reiterated his condemnation of the ongoing Israeli offensive and called for a new era of Egyptian-Turkish cooperation. If Turkey and Egypt unite, everybody will be singing of peace in the region, and if we stick together, the region will no longer be dominated by crying and weeping. Okay, and on and on. But you get the point here. And so we get Egypt involved, uh, possibly. And again, I, I know it's annoying to go back to the book all the time, but I think it's important to show that uh, if you just study Scripture well enough uh, and, and, and carefully enough, uh, this is what you expected to unfold. And that was I published that in advance of the event, uh, saying that uh, Israel would be attacked from the south, instigated by Egypt, that this would lead to a response uh, from not just Israel, but from uh, the desolator, Obama, and, and, and uh, uh, I believe also uh, built in that is NATO. Uh, and that I said there would be another attack from the north. And I said it would either be Turkey, uh, Syria, or Russia. Uh, and we've seen the conflict. It, all those nations are already basically going to be involved one way or the other. I don't know how exactly, but Turkey and Syria are already uh, 
you know, fighting on the northern border of Syria up there, on their border, at their border. And Turkey is in an alliance with uh, Syria and, uh, I'm sorry, Russia is in an alliance with Syria and Turkey is a NATO nation. So that's one way that this could unfold. Or Turkey here could break, uh, in practice, effectively, break ranks with uh, NATO and join Egypt and attack Israel. And we'd still have the Turkey uh, being brought in and, and again, uh, have a, a conflict where the uh, United States and NATO gets involved in the Middle East with, in, in a war responding on two fronts, fighting a northern and a southern front. Uh, all alternatives that I proposed explicitly in, in Approaching Armageddon, Disaster, War, and Persecution, published April 2nd, 2011, uh, and obviously written well before then as I worked on it, uh, it's happened. Okay, the things are unfolding, and now it's just a matter of watching it happen. The war is going to develop and escalate, it looks like. Uh, I can't guarantee at this point, but it's getting closer to that. Uh, it's going to escalate over a period of three and a half years, beginning any time now, or uh, what I think is probable already having begun on August 8th when the peace treaty was violated, Egypt made its northern move initially. But, you know pinning down dates is, is virtually, uh, well, almost impossible, so I'm not going to make any guarantees on a date for sure. But you get the idea. We're here. I suggested, I said in the book that it would, this would all happen uh, in the latter half of 2012 or the first half of 2013. So between August of 2012 and uh, June of 2013. And we're watching it happen. Okay, so prepare your hearts, be ready. Uh, Turn from sin, and I, I strongly recommend people study uh, what it is to be a, a, a covenanter and understand uh, the biblical under, you know the biblical truths about covenanting, the Christian faith, and the Reformation, uh, and the Second Reformation. These things that have happened uh, in the last few centuries that the modern West has utterly rejected both the church and the nations, and are now setting themselves up to be judged by God. All right, there you have it. Take care.